Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 5th and today we're taking a look at the system spawning thunderstorms, some of them severe across the region today. You can see we do have the severe thunderstorm warning in effect for portions of Idaho. It just crossed the Oregon border here moving into Idaho. There's an interesting looking cell that had some rotation in the southern flank of this one here too. It's going to pass just north of Boise. So heads up for that with some lightning and some medium sized hail up to an inch could be included with that storm as well. But watch out. This could even produce a brief tornado as this passes north of Boise, Idaho right now. If we back up a little bit here, you can see all the lightning occurring in northeast Oregon. There's some going on in Washington as well, as well as some flash flood warnings in effect for near Wenatchee. The one just expired north of Spokane, but some still going on for portions of Idaho and southeast Washington. Taking a look at a little bit of a wider view here, you can see that th severe thunderstorm warning moving into Idaho there. And that storm there going to pass just north of Boise. Brief tornado threat possible at that one. And you can see we've got some pretty good showers moving around the area, mostly for the higher terrain. And you can see that flash flood warning still does exist for near Wenatchee. But anywhere across western Washington, western Oregon, especially Willamette, Puget Sound, could get a thunderstorm during the day today. SPC highlights that threat there. They also have the marginal risk for a severe thunderstorm around this area here. So that includes most of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and that's coming to fruition here through Idaho right now. So taking a look here at the water vapor and you can see these strong thunderstorms popping up mainly eastern portions of washington oregon and these are going to move on into idaho and western montana during the day but you can see there is a uh, thunderstorm threat for much of western washington western oregon today as well so you can see there are some flood watches some flooding concerns with these storms as they're dropping some pretty heavy rain across the region here this is showing that marginal risk for the severe weather that we just talked about. And you can see the Puget Sound and Willamette Valley are included in the thunderstorm risk today. But check out across some of the Great Plains out there. There is a tornado, wind, and hail threat. So heads up if you're traveling out there, especially through Nebraska, Kansas, down through Oklahoma today. And this is for day two. You can see that thunderstorm risk does include Spokane, just east of Pendleton, Oregon, Idaho Panhandle tomorrow. And that's going to push off even further on into Montana on the day three forecast there. But Spokane National Weather Service on top of things as always here showing the flood watches, flash flood warnings off and on today can be expected, especially over burn scar areas and wherever some of this heavier showers pop up, especially if they start training over each other. Now taking a look here at the HER, the 3KM, you can see it's highlighting these strong storms, a lot of rainfall in them, lots of lightning, hail is possible as well, even some gusty winds. And you can see these moving through the area. Look at this pretty powerful line of storms going to be moving through Idaho on in through this evening. And there is a chance for a stray thunderstorm for the Willamette Valley Puget Sound, but not as intense as what's happening east of the Cascades today. And you can see this is the reason why. Look at the instability that's built up over there eastern portions and then you can see it kind of be it gobbled up that's kind of what the atmosphere does it releases these thunderstorms and it nullifies that cape kind of balances itself out and as we go on in through monday we'll back up a little bit here this 18z will run out a little bit further and i'll just kind of show you where this instability pops up the next day again you can see mainly eastern portions for tomorrow should be out of the woods there for puget sound willamette valley as far as thunderstorm threat through the day tomorrow and tuesday should be even further east by that time now look, this is like at maximum individual wave height that system did bring some waves to the coastline here and you can see we calmed down a bit but you can see the gulf of alaska low kind of churning out there causing some big waves these will eventually reach the coast on and through later this week and then we'll calm down a bit again but just kind of an interesting thing just like to remind you this is something we will be looking at at times maximum individual wave height especially as we get back into the fall and winter months i'll show you some interesting some other interesting extended forecast model runs here in a moment but i wanted to show you this now this is the european the 12z run fresh off the presses here and you can see this troughing kind of give way to this transient raging for tuesday it looks like a nice day across the region on the day tuesday probably have some high clouds moving in later on during the day but should be a fairly warm day up into the 70s for much of western washington western oregon which of course means even warmer for eastern portions and then you can see the Gulf of Alaska trough churning out there, and it's kind of, you know, this ridge is trying to build over Northern California, Southern Oregon, but that Gulf of Alaska trough is going to be very strong here. It's eventually going to win that battle and just kind of charge through the Pacific Northwest and keep this troughing going on through mid-June here. 
and that's about the as far as the European goes out 10 days here. But you can see several rounds of active weather are going to continue to move through the area here through mid-June, according to the European. See what the GFS shows here now. As we go into Tuesday, good agreement with that transient ridging on the day Tuesday. High clouds quickly arrive, but then the ridging starts to try to build over Northern California, Oregon. It's the Gulf of Alaska troughing going strong. is probably going to be bringing in clouds and some precipitation to at least some portions. We'll also have to see how much of this warmth extends up into Oregon and Idaho as we go on in through later next week. But by next week, and you can see the troughing winds out, and especially deep troughing on the GFS shows up here through mid-June here and check this out just plagues us on in through later on into mid-June towards the 19th before maybe some ridging it comes back in the extended but look at the even the extended GFS is kind of hanging on to the reinforcement of this troughing as we go through the extended but the Canadian let's see what it shows Good agreement there with the transient ridging on Tuesday. Quickly breaks that down as we go on in through Wednesday. Then that ridging starts to build back. And the Canadians kind of been on the side showing this ridging building in a little bit more than the other models here. And this would bring the warmth a little bit further north into Oregon. And we would just have to see which model is going to win out here. This is a pretty tight gradient here. So there is going to be some precipitation, some clouds probably plaguing mainly western British Columbia here, Vancouver Island, and probably into western Washington in this scenario. But that ridging tries to hang out a little bit more here on the Canadian before that, of course, on in through next weekend, that troughing eventually wins out. Canadian in good agreement with the extended troughing there going on in through next week as well. So this is Seattle-Tacoma, European. And just to remind you, we're getting up towards 70 degrees as being the average temperature at this time of year for Seattle. So you can see the European has us below average generally on in through next week, except for Tuesday and then all the way in through next week and into early next week as well. Here's for Spokane. Generally, you know, it looks like Thursday should be the warmest day out there. And then we cool back down again as this trophy starts to settle over the region. Here's Portland showing a pretty rainy system here coming in starting Friday morning. You can see the precipitation totals jump up there during the day Friday. And this is total precipitation spread in ensembles. Uh, Ensemble spread in inches. You can see the so the highest range of the ensembles would be about four inches as of sat, sat, Saturday night here, and the lowest range would be just under an inch. So you can see a pretty good swath of rain coming in here through later next week is likely. The green is the mean, and the control run is the blue here. So the mean is the average of all the ensemble runs. The control run is the initial conditions that we just kind of let run out as we understand the atmosphere as it is now and we kind of let those conditions run out by themselves. That's the control run there. So we got pretty good model agreement here that a pretty wet system is coming in through Friday. You can see that also for Seattle too here, the ensemble and the mean, uh, the control and the mean are actually in good agreement here as well. And this is for Spokane. Again, looks like this will start Saturday morning about and good precipitation amounts coming through there. They can use it out there as always heading into the summer months. So what we're looking at here is percentage of average precipitation from October 1st on in through this June 4th period here. You can see that much of eastern Oregon still is below average precipitation when you incorporate it back to October 1st here. And you can see western Washington, portions of northwest Oregon here, actually above average precipitation. You can see some of the higher terrain, the Okanagan Highlands, the east slopes of the Cascades are actually a little bit below average. The Columbia Basin, a little bit above average there. So this kind of showing you that, but check out Nevada and California. They've been really kind of dealing with this below average precipitation in the southern half of Oregon as well, Utah. Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Montana, for the most part, below average precipitation amounts. Some of the higher terrain there for Wyoming, actually all of Wyoming is higher terrain, but some of the mountainous areas there are above average. Now, this is average temperature departure. This is from January 1st to June 4th, and you can see the Pacific Northwest. It's not your imagination. We've definitely been below average temperatures. You can see eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and Idaho have really been well below some of their average temperatures. Western Washington, slightly below average, some of the Cascade areas as well. But you can see California has been generally pretty warm. Portions of southwest Nevada also, as well as much of Arizona. So checking this out, this is seasonal map. This is sea surface temperature anomaly. This is the European. This is June. This goes month by month. So you go July, August, September. Do you guys see the kind of the, the big signal here, the La Nina kind of hanging on as we go through October, November, December? Starts to wane a little bit in strength of December as we are uncertain just how long or how 
strong this La Nina will be as we move into next winter. So as we check that out, you know, that's just something we'll be watching. We'll just kind of see what the models say and see just how strong or if maybe the La Nina will somehow go away before this winter. I suppose it's possible here, but models still show those La Nina conditions as we go on in through early winter. This is also something we'll be looking at too as the summer goes along. This is her 3KM vertically integrated smoke. So you can kind of see where wildfires are going on. Look at New Mexico. You can see this wildfire out here pumping smoke into the atmosphere here. And it kind of wanes and rebuilds and goes on. So as we go into the summer, we'll be watching the Pacific Northwest and we'll try to find any fires that are going on over BC or Washington, Oregon. And we'll be able to, you know, plot out the act, the prevailing wind direction to see just how much the smoke will and will impact certain areas of the Pacific Northwest. So kind of a cool model there. Now this is 500 millibar heights. This is the same thing I showed you a second ago, European seasonal. This goes month by month. You can see the active troughing out over the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Alaska through the month of June. Now click to July and check it out. Things calm down quite a bit across the Pacific Ocean here. It looks like we have some above average heights on in through July. So maybe we'll get a little bit above average or at least get a couple warm spells through July. August, same thing. A little bit above average heights for the Pacific Northwest. September, same thing, above average heights. October, look at that Gulf of Alaska troughing starts to show itself again on in through October. November, not very much of a signal here, just maybe a little bit above average heights for November, but now watch December, check it out. That's classic kind of cold air intrusion. So that's this is way out in fantasy land, entertainment purposes only, just kind of showing you some interesting model runs that go out to the extended here. But in a La Nina pattern, you know, this might not be out of the question here. So something to look forward to. Maybe we'll get another chilly December with another snow threat across, across the Pacific Northwest again. So anyway, just thought I'd show you guys that. And yeah, so watch these storms, especially if you guys are off into Idaho, Eastern Washington, Oregon, Cascades, and you could get a straight thunderstorm across Seattle, Portland, down towards uh, you know Eugene and Salem as well. So heads up for that. Heavy rains coming across. And of course, some of these heavier showers can be moving into southern BC, into the higher terrain especially, and even southwest BC, Vancouver. You could get a thunderstorm today. It's not out of the question at all. So, yeah, and also remember there are some flash flood warnings out there. If you get underneath one of those showers or they keep training over your area, watch out for that flooding, especially if you're in burn scar areas. So, anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow and we'll keep watching the extended forecast and we'll try to see how long that, you know, we, we talked about that ridging building up and going away on into our extended here. And the Canadian kind of showed it the most, this ridging. How strong will this ridging be in our extended for on into next weekend? Models are showing we're getting a pretty good douse of precipitation across Portland, Seattle, Spokane. And so we'll just check it out. We'll keep watching that. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so and click like and go ahead and keep leaving comments below. I'm trying to take them into account and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.